Hey everyone, welcome back to KC3D Sparks. Today we are going to be continuing our tavern and adding in an upright studio style piano to it. As you can see, I kind of added on. So in the last episode, I believe, I said that I was going to um, start doing some other series after a few more tavern ones. I'm still going to be building off of the tavern. So what I'm planning on doing is having a kitchen and storage area. And then off over here is kind of like the inn style rooms and then like the owner's suite back here. So if you're interested in those, keep watching. I'll add in more series in the future. For now, we are going to continue with our tavern. Like I said, we're going to be making an upright piano today. So let's just go ahead and skip over to an empty layer and we'll start by adding a cube so hit shift a mesh and cube and it added over there let me fix that by hitting shift c to put the cursor in the center origin to 3d cursor and then geometry to origin that way it's perfectly centered and yeah oh rename that perfect so first thing, I looked up the average dimensions for an upright piano. It's about five feet by two, two and a half feet ish. And then usually about, oh gosh, anywhere from like three to uh, five feet tall as well. So dimensions are pretty flexible because there's no like true standard size for upright pianos, I assume. But that's only from like five minutes of research, so. <laughs> do what you want for the sizing for me i'm going to put the x at one inch so as if it were actually five feet long the y i'm gonna do quarter of an inch and for the z i'm gonna put at three quarters of an inch so that gives us our nice rectangle box setup Go ahead and tab into edit mode. Gonna hit control R to add a loop. Just hit escape so it goes right in the center. C for wireframe view. A to deselect everything and then border select. X to delete, oops, those vertices if I can. There we go. Go over here to your modifier wrench tab and we're gonna put a mirror modifier on it. Make sure you check the clipping box and then you can always check it by hitting G for grab, make sure they stay connected. Perfect. And while I'm at it, I'm just gonna go ahead and add a subdivision surface modifier, even though I don't really need it yet. Just while I'm here, mine as well. For my inspiration for this, I guess before I start going into too much detail, I found this image on Google and just pulled it off. This is kind of what I'm going for. I'm not gonna go into nearly as much detail as I would like to thought this was pretty cool looking though so obviously we got this main box set up back here we're gonna pull out this keyboard part and the feet I guess um, at the same time and then later on we can add in the cover for the keys and maybe add in some little insets um, if it starts to be too long I might splice this up into two so I'll do like the basic form in this video and then maybe in the next video if it seems like it does well I can go into further detail so that's kind of the inspiration for it for this part I'm just gonna go ahead and add another loop bring it to about there and we're getting basically our edges built up so for the top it had that little piece that came off about there kind of like the um, yeah, this lip up here is what we're going for and we're also going to add a loop here to get this little edge as well um, but we'll probably extrude that at the same time as we do the feet so we're not going to worry about that one yet let's go ahead and grab this we're going to hit e to extrude but just hit escape we're going to hit s to size it and then shift z so it sizes in only the x and the y directions going to the top view because X pulled out more than the Y. I want to make sure it doesn't go too crazy. Perfect. And then I want to go ahead and sharpen that edge. 
so I can look at it better and because I think it'll look better sharpened there. Looks good. So for the next part, I wanna start setting up the loops for drawing out the keyboard itself, the legs, and the bottom edge as well. So for the bottom edge, that one's easy. We'll just go ahead and pull this down to about there. Pretty flexible on that, just wherever you think the border would look good. Now, for the one side of the leg, we already have this line set up pretty good. So we'll just do Control R and set it up about there. Go ahead and do Control R. So that'll be the top and bottom of the side piece, but the keyboard itself, I want to go ahead and add another loop in the center. So this is where our keys are gonna come out of. Hopefully that all made sense. Basically what we wanna do to start off, is go ahead and grab all of these vertices here. We'll hop in a side view, so hit three, we're gonna hit E to extrude, just get this first part going. So there's that. We can go ahead and deselect these two. And we'll go ahead, leave this one for now maybe. Yes, E to extrude. And pull that out a little bit. And then we wanna go ahead and go into face select deselect this face and then E to extrude these. I'm just gonna pull that out right there. That way it gives us a little bit more geometry to work with when we try to curve this out and add some other features possibly. So that gives us a little bit of extra geometry to work with this leg here, hopefully. We'll see how that ends up later. And we have the top of the leg up here extruded a little bit so we can have some fun with that. First, let's go ahead and fix the keyboard part. This part itself is going to come down a little bit, so let's go ahead and hit Control R and add a loop here. And then we're gonna go ahead and delete this edge. Perfect. And actually, go ahead and delete this vertice as well. Now what we'll do is grab these two, go into front view, hit E to extrude, and bring that down to match this. Go ahead and grab these two vertices and hit F for face and we'll also face this off. Perfect. Now for the keys themselves, um, we'll go ahead and sharpen that up in a minute, but for now, let's just go ahead and turn this off so we can see better. Grab these, E to extrude, and we're just gonna go ahead and size in. Now it's mainly doing it against the X axis, so let's go ahead and do S and then Y. Pull them back a little bit. Perfect. E to extrude again and pull that up. So these will be the actual keys themselves. Okay, so we'll set up some lines later on to actually put in some keys. Obviously, it's not going to be the standard key, the white key and the black key count, but, you know, um, I'm just going to do some basic lines to give the imitation of a piano. So, now that we have that, I'm going to go ahead and put that back on so I can see it. And we're going to go ahead and add a loop here, up a little bit. And we'll go ahead, size that along the x-axis. Okay, now for this part, obviously we can go ahead and sh start sharpening a lot of these edges. So now we have those of that set up. Um, I wanna go ahead and start adding in the loops for the keys and 
Actually, before we head into the keys, I want to add on the keyboard cover and the music note stand. So let's go ahead and add that first. Now, I want to be pretty, I don't want to say lazy, but I want to say um, simple with the way I want to do the keyboard cover because I don't want to actually have it open in the back because it's not going to be functional. So basically instead of extruding this up and then leaning it back against here which you know you could certainly do if you wanted to leave a gap and then have it print that way i'm just gonna have it so it's solid and gives the illusion of a cover so what i'm going to do instead is i'm going to hit Control r and add a loop and bring it pretty close to this side just leave a little bit of a gap and that way i can just grab these two vertices and bring them out. You're also going to have to grab these two as well. And I'm actually going to delete that edge loop because that's not needed there. That way I can get this even closer. Perfect. And then I'll go ahead, drag this up to be almost actually yeah, right there so that way it matches that other loop and I can just bring that out. Okay, control R, add a loop there. That way I can go ahead and grab this face here, whoops, E to extrude and draw that out. So that is the part that comes down right there and Maybe a little bit further. Perfect. I'm going to do Shift E because obviously you want that part to be flat. And same with this face here. Shift E. And we'll sharpen this edge. Shift E. And down here. Maybe not all the way. Perfect. And we'll leave it a little irregular here so that way it gives some of that separation and if you even wanted you could probably add a loop here and grab these two and draw that down to give it more of a divot more of an illusion of separation okay cool so now that we have that let's go ahead and while we're at it we'll just pull out the music sheet stand. So for the size, we'll go ahead and just add a loop, draw in, maybe about there since it's going to be on the other side as well. And we'll go ahead and head two loops here, size along the Z, do about there. Make sure that this is perfectly straight, so we'll size that along the x-axis. Perfect. Go into side view and hit E to extrude. Give us a little basis. Gonna hit E to extrude again. We're gonna rotate that. And that kind of messes up our alignment a little bit. So we'll grab that. Whoops. Grab both of those and make that straight again. And same thing with the bottom. Go ahead and add a loop. Size that along the Y axis to make that flat. We'll go ahead and extend that a little bit. Let's go ahead and draw this back some actually. E to extrude again. And select those top ones and this will be the lip that actually holds the music in place. And now we basically sharpen everything. So we'll go ahead and deselect those. Shift E. There we go. That looks pretty good. Obviously, personal preference for that. So you can go 
a little bit fancier if you wanted to. Now, the main thing I want to address is the legs themselves and the keys. So let's go ahead and tackle the legs first because once we add the keys in, we're gonna have a lot of loops to deal with and uh, I'm just not ready for that. So, <laughs> okay, go ahead and do control R. I wanna add three loops. Go into side view, hit Z for wireframe and we're gonna go ahead and draw this back. Start giving it a curve. Let me bring this more like there. I want to make sure that stays straight. And maybe even draw that out a little bit. And we could even draw that back and then we could sharpen it if we really wanted to. And then go ahead and grab these. And right now I'm just kind of having fun, not trying to imitate too much from the reference image. Um, I like to be pretty freeform with it. Have some fun when you can, you know? So as you go along with this, just kind of grab vertices, pull them in directions that you like rather than, unless you're doing like commission and they want something very particular, I say just go for it. All right, I'm gonna sharpen these. Give it more of that pedestal feeling. I'm gonna do control R here. Sharpen those. Cool. I like that. Really simple, but you know, a little bit of detail. And I want to kind of imitate what I did with this up here really quickly. So what I'll go ahead and do is I want to extrude this first to kind of like the reference image had, oh, it's just like that. Never mind. I th I'm thinking of another reference image I was looking at earlier. With that one, it was almost like a seashell up here. Not quite, but kind of that shape. And then the little, um, whatever you would call this extrusion underneath of it. That's what I'm gonna go, kind of go for. So I'd rather draw this down a little bit, make it a little bit more square. And then that kind of sets up that line. Ooh, which I would do. Go ahead and grab those four actually. So let's set that up right there. And then I can draw this out. Need to extrude. Mm, let's leave that for now and just do this part. Now let's be careful that it doesn't touch that too much. So I definitely can't bring it out too drastically. It's already intersecting, so I don't think I'll be able to unless I move some of these vertices around, which don't think I'll bother with today. I'll just leave that if I end up doing another video where we go into detail for the piano itself. So I'm just going to leave it as is, and maybe I'll just draw this front piece out. 
or do it with this side. Works okay. Not the biggest fan of it, but I guess that works. Yeah, not sure I how I feel about it. I'll just undo that for now. You guys can mess with that one if you feel like it. Last thing I want to do is set up some lines for keys. Basically, control R like we have been in the past. We're going to add a ton of loops, but not too many because we want it to be visible. So maybe like that. And then it didn't do it on this side, so I'll make sure we get it set up properly. All right, that works. And then just like you normally would with the planks of wood and anything else, we'll just go ahead and line that up to be pulled in. Okay, it might be a little bit weird, but that's fine. And I'm also going to do control R and add in a loop there so we can extrude up a couple of these that will become the black keys. So what I'm going to do first before I worry about adding in the black keys is just grab whoop, if I can see them these middle edges. I'm grabbing this end piece as well um, just to see how it looks. I might bring it back up if it looks weird, but I'm just going to try something. So go into front view and go ahead and grab the Z and draw that down. And I'm going to be pretty dramatic with this to make sure it prints well awesome and right now it looks like a dinosaur back so we want to make sure we sharpen up those edges so go ahead and hit z and grab all of those deselect this random stuff in the back and do shift e perfect okay so I want to do a couple of black keys for that. Let's deselect everything. And I don't remember how often they appear or anything. I'm just kind of, kind of go, oof, a little bit difficult to see, but Grab some random ones. Now the way I'm going to do this is I'll hit E to extrude. Go into front view. Just go ahead and draw them up. Oh, poop. There's an extra one there. Before I extrude, make sure I don't have anything random selected. Hopefully that's the only one. Try that again. So E to extrude draw them up and then I'm just going to size them along the z-axis make them nice and flat and draw that back down because I don't need it that tall and go back into wireframe view border select them again get rid of all the random stuff that I just selected
And shifty. Okay, they look a little weird. But I'm okay with a little weird. Because it's not supposed to be perfect unless you really want it to be. Obviously you can, but um, I'm okay with it as is. Um, if you're more comfortable, of course, you could leave out the black keys and just have it the white ones. Take your pick or add in more. It might look better if you add in some more of these keys. Not sure. But let me know what you think and let me know if you want it a part two of this uh, to go into more detail and maybe fix up the keys themselves and add in a lot of detail on the legs and maybe add in uh, whatever you would call these <laughs> little insets um, we can certainly do that and maybe even make a stool for it so again please don't forget to like subscribe and comment i really appreciate your feedback and i'll see you guys next week